Happy Easter! Welcome back to Music Notes. Today we're going to discuss one of our favorite Lutheran Easter hymns. You've seen the title, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. Before we go any farther, let's take a listen. So there you have it. This is one of our most favorite times of year, celebration, joy, and we have the perfect hymn today for that. So with Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds, our text actually doesn't date back that far, just maybe a, a hundred years or so. So let's get to the story behind the text for today. That comes to us, we'll start before the 100 years, maybe around the mid 1800s. And we'll start with a gentleman by the name of Henry Strodak. Now he and his parents, they moved, they immigrated to the United States from Germany, or at the time it was Bavaria. And they immigrated here and they settled first in New York and then they quickly moved to southeastern Pennsylvania. And in southeastern Pennsylvania, that was known as Dutch country or Pennsylvania Dutch. And there was a very large population of Lutherans, Germans. And so they were very content there. And Henry and uh, he settled down and he found a wife, Mary, and they started going to church. And it was there at church that the pastor encouraged young Henry to enter into the ministry. And so first he attended the Mullenberg College there in southeastern Pennsylvania. And soon after his undergraduate was completed, he went on to the Lutheran Theological Seminary of Philadelphia, and he became a Lutheran pastor in 1874. Now this is important because he goes on to have a son and his name is Paul. And so 20 years later, Paul uh, Strodak, he follows into his father's footsteps and he exactly follows. He goes to the same undergraduate college, the Mullenberg, um, Mullenberg College for undergraduate. And then he too goes on and enters the Lutheran Theological Seminary of Philadelphia, and in 1899, he becomes ordained. This is all important because it is Paul, the son of Henry, that we have to thank for the words for today's hymn, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. Now, Paul was born March 1876, and as we mentioned, he goes, he follows his father's footsteps, he goes into the ministry, he becomes a Lutheran pastor. About five years or so after being ordained, he gets married, and he goes on to be a pastor 
for 48 years. So he has um, just all of his life. He's in the ministry. He's a pastor to four churches in that time in different locations in Pennsylvania, one in Ohio, and then he works his way back to Pennsylvania at the end of his life. Some of his accomplishments, because there were quite a few, and it's, it's neat that he is a Lutheran pastor. He worked as a literary editor for the United Lutheran Church Publication House in Philadelphia for two decades, so 20 years. He also translated the 1523 Lutheran Order of Baptism from German to English, and he also wrote a manual on the liturgy, and that became the standard liturgical reference for that tradition. He goes on to serve on the commission for the 1958 Lutheran service book and hymnal, and he also wrote a handful of books and then, of course, a small collection of hymns, one of which was notably, Now Let the Vault of Heaven Resound. And so that is the text that we're talking about today. Now, that's really all there is to say about him. He was a pastor. He ministered to many. And on the side, he wrote and he wrote poetry. And that's how we have our text for today. Now, Paul is the one that picked the tune. So in, when you're writing poetry, it has certain meter. Um, and so he was able to, especially being really knowledgeable of all the tunes in our Lutheran hymnal, he was able to pick just the perfect tune for his text. And the tune that he chose, Paul chose the tune. It was a familiar German tune, and it is titled, Lost uns erfreuden. Herzlich Scher, and that is, let us rejoice most heartily. And that tune actually originates in Germany in 1623, and it was published in the Geistliche uh, Kirchensong, Gesang, Kirchengesang, which is the um, hymnal of the time, and the text was actually the text that went to that tune was indeed an Easter text. Not Paul's, of course, but uh, a different German text that was about Easter was written to that tune back in 1623. Now that hymnal, interestingly enough, was a German Catholic hymnal and it was put together as a reaction to or as a counter to, as part of the counter Reformation. So that's kind of interesting. Now we'll fast forward still a little bit about our tune to the 1800s. So the tune originates in 1623. We're still trying to figure out, you know, we know that Paul hears it in his hymnal, so we've got to figure out how it got there. So in the 1800s, um, we'll fast forward to, this is a name you know well, Ralph Vaughn Williams. Just a, a brilliant English composer, uh, writer, he has so much um, to his name, but he wrote ballets, operas, chamber music, secular, religious, orchestral pieces, including nine symphonies over 60 years. Um, so just an amazing musician, and I'm sure we will find a hymn one day and delve deeply, more deeply into his background. But one other thing that Ralph Vaughan Williams did in the course of his life was between 1904 and 1906, he was busy as the music editor of a new hymn book, and that was the English hymnal. And so during that process, he took a lot of the original German tunes and he would make some slight alterations and ultimately he harmonized the tune. This sounds a lot like what we heard Bach did um, in our last music note episode when we talked about, oh dearest Jesus, what law hast thou broken? Um, we have the tune from Kruger, but then it was Bach that really made it famous by, of course, putting it into the passions. 
but also by harmonizing it. And so that is what this very um, well-trained composer did. Ralph Vaughan Williams took a, a pretty good tune and made it even better and then put all those harmonies in there as well. So one interesting thing of note that Vaughan Williams said of his experience with working on that English hymnal, he said, quote, I know now that two years of close association with some of the best and as well as some of the worst uh, tunes in the world was a better musical education than any amount of sonatas or fugues. So that's interesting. He worked on that hymnal and um, like I said, um, making those tunes better with the harmony and whatnot. And that was probably just a fabulous learning experience for him because he just goes on to um, make more fabulous music. But that's funny. Uh, I, what I thought was funny about that is how he commented on some of the best tunes are in there and then some of the worst. And we find that, I'm sorry, I find that to be true in our hymnal today. Some of our tunes are just, oh, we, we love to sing them. And as soon as we hear on the organ, Karen starts playing some of those, we're like, oh, that's great. And then occasionally there'll be one and we'll say, oops, I don't, I don't know that, or that's boring. So they're in there too. I try not to pick them. Every once in a while there's a, oops, I thought we knew that tune and darn it, we didn't. Oh well. So that's interesting, just kind of a side note on Ralph Vaughan Williams. He's the one that really makes the tune that Last uns erfreuden herrschlich scher, the one we're talking about today. Da, 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 da. He's the one that makes the tune great. All right. And I would say for me, um, not being raised Lutheran, the words in the text that I associate with that tune, and maybe some of you do too, are all creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and let us sing. Alleluia, alleluia, thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh sing ye, oh sing ye, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. So for me growing up, those are the words that I sang to that magnificent tune. But we have Paul who comes along in probably the early 1900s and he likes that tune as well and he writes a poem and then he puts the tune to it and voila we have now all the vault of heaven resounds so absolutely wonderful and in case you were wondering all creatures of our god and king uh, one day we might talk about that that is actually it's an english christian hymn and it's by william draper but it was based on a poem by St. Francis of Assisi. So that poem goes back to um, the year 1225. So that's a whole nother episode. Like I said, go down the rabbit hole all the time. Um, back to our tune. We actually have our tune a couple more times in our hymnal. So we have it there for now all the vault of heaven resounds. And that's on page 465. And then if you flip to page 493, you will see we have a different text to the same tune. And that is a hymn of glory let us sing. New hymns throughout the world shall ring. Alleluia, alleluia. So there it is again. And of course, it has the alleluias. Those alleluias, uh, no matter what text is going on or how the text changes, almost all the time, those alleluias, that refrain is always there. So let's see, we've got it with now all the vault. We have it with a hymn of glory, let us sing. Let's turn to page 670 and see what we have there. We have on page 670, there it was. Oh, 
ye watchers and ye holy ones. And of course, if you look down there, the Alleluia's stick. They are part of that tune. And then on page 816 is the final time we hear the tune in our hymnal. And on page 816 we have, ah, we have an Isaac Watts text. And he writes the text for, from all that dwell below the skies. And if you look there on page 816, the Alleluia's are there. So we get to sing the tune to four different texts in our Lutheran service hymnal. So it's, it's a great tune, inspiring, majestic, celebrational. So it is perfect for Easter, which is important because if you think back, that original text to the German tune was written for Easter. So Paul uh, Strodak was really keeping um, to that original probably thought of the uh, composer of that tune um, when he wrote Easter words to the tune. So now let's talk a little bit about the text. So I'm going to read some. Let's see if I can do this without my glasses. Here we go. Now all the vault of heaven resounds in praise of love that still abounds. Christ has triumphed, he is living. Sing, choirs of angels, loud and clear. Repeat their song of glory here. Christ has triumphed, Christ has triumphed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. So that's verse one. So in verse one, that's interesting because that's kind of a perspective from heaven, isn't it? Now all the vault of heaven resounds. And while we don't yet know what heaven's going to look like, we are surely given a lot of clues in the Bible. And here, Paul describes heaven as a, a vault, a vault large like the dome of our earth, the sky when we look up. And it's filled with angels singing, Christ has triumphed. How wonderful is that? The glorious vaulted dome of heaven and the angels are singing the good news. Christ has triumphed over sin and death, over the grave. He has, he has beaten the devil. Okay, so Christ has triumphed. And this occurs now because of Christ's atoning sacrifice for us. We've just gotten through our season of Lent and we had a couple of really um, heart-wrenching Lenten songs to sing that were, you know, really called for us to be introspective and realize the great sacrifice that our Father in Heaven gave through His Son, the death of His Son for us. And now here we are singing about the wonderful, just magnificence of what he has done for us. He died for us and he rose again, victorious. And so we get to sing this amazing song of praise and thanks to our God in heaven because of what he has done for us. And then the author goes on to tell us, you know, what to do here on earth. What do we do? Repeat their song of glory here. Shout it from the rafters. Christ has triumphed. Okay, so that's our first verse. Verse two, eternal is the gift he brings. Therefore, our heart with rapture sings. Christ has triumphed. He is living. Now still he comes to give us life and by his presence stills all strife. Christ has triumphed. He is living. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Praise God. It's, it's just, it's wonderful. No wonder we love to sing it. So in this next verse, 
our author, Paul, he takes it farther. Not only has Christ triumphed, but his presence here on earth, in the flesh to be with us, and in his suffering and death, has given us what? The gift of eternal life. Wow. So we know what that sacrifice was, and it was for you and for me. And that is a gift of beyond our life here on earth. We have that promise and wonderful glory and home in heaven to look forward to. So, of course, we should be feeling this rapture, this our rapture sings from the heart, this intense joy and pleasure in knowing that we are going to be with our Savior in heaven one day. So, this is joy proclaimed not only from our lips, but in our hearts with thanksgiving to God. So, again, it's, it's great to be doing a wonderful uplifting hymn. So, let's get to verse 3. Oh, fill us, Lord, with dauntless love. Set heart and will on things above. That we conquer through your triumph, grant grace sufficient for life's day, that by our love we truly say, Christ has triumphed, he is living. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Okay, so verse three, we are kind of brought back to our reality. We're, we're so gleeful and thankful, grateful, but we are still here on earth and we are still facing our day-to-day -day trials, um, distractions, trials, temptations. And this verse is more like a petition to God. We are asking for God's help to help us through this maze of life here on earth. We are asking him to fill us with the Holy Spirit, fill us, Lord, with dauntless love, that Holy Spirit to come in and fill us, keep our hearts and minds set on Jesus. I think about, you know, um, when we walk on the water of faith, as soon as we look at those waves, what happens? Oh, we are distracted, we fall, we fail. We are asking God, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Help us keep our eyes set on Jesus Christ. That's all it takes. And then in keeping ourselves in prayer and in the word, we protect ourselves from the devil. And in the song, we are asking that the Lord grant us grace to live a life worthy of the calling he has made for us. That's what we're asking for. We pray and we ask that our lives exemplify the love that Christ has shown us and given us so that we may be a beacon of hope and light for others, that they can see Christ in us. That should be our goal here while we are on earth. All right. To verse 4, adoring praises now we bring, and with the heavenly blessed sing, Christ has triumphed. Alleluia. Be to the Father and our Lord, the Spirit blessed, most holy God, all the glory never ending. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. So, you know, in that last verse, right when it starts off, adoring praises now we bring. I immediately thought of the beginning of Christ's life. When he was born, what happened? The vault of heaven opened up and the angels were there in the fields. What were they doing to the shepherds? They were singing from heaven down. They're adoring praise and telling the shepherds to go, go see this amazing gift that has been put on earth for you. Your Savior has been born. 
So that's what the beginning of this hymn reminds me of. And I think too of the wise men, the adoring wise men, how they came across many, many miles to adore the beautiful child, the King Jesus that was born to all of us. And so I, I reflect back on the beginning of Christ's life at that time um, and how the story began. And then the angels are singing, and now we sing praise with the angels. We are singing with the blessed, with the heavenly blessed. We sing, Christ has triumphed. And we sing worshipful praises to him who has triumphed over sin. We sing the alleluias now and on and on until one day, we can hear with our own ears in heaven the alleluias that all that have gone before us sing, that the angels sing, and that Jesus too will be there in heaven singing with us these beautiful songs of praise to the Father. So that's just an amazing thought. There with our own ears resound in the heavens resounding forever. What a wonderful, wonderful gift God has given us, eternal life with him in heaven. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I hope you have enjoyed this music note episode. And I so loved just learning the background of our song today. Now all the vault of heaven resounds. It is Easter, we are joyful, we are grateful that Christ has triumphed over sin and death. He is in the grave no longer, he is in heaven. And he is waiting for us there for one day when we can reach out to Jesus and say, thank you, thank you so much for what you gave for me. Bye-bye, happy Easter everyone.